All right, as we get started, a couple things. Now, I realize that this is not directed toward anybody, okay? But I want to make sure that people understand this, okay? When you look at this, what I didn't want you to do, because I had people come up to me and say, is that what you want us to do? Is that what you want us to do? Yes. That didn't mean I wanted you to make right lines that said all this stuff. That's not a joke, okay? And I just, because because some people did that. They literally had a right line that said, please enter first name for employee one, Jeff. No. You were supposed to do what we had been doing in class. In other words, you did a right line that said, please enter first name for employee one, colon, and then you did a read line. Does that make sense? All right. I mean, when you look at the beginning of this, it said write a program that calculates the gross pay. So you had to do calculations. All right. I mean, if you didn't do calculations, you lost some points big time. And you could make a case and say, well, I asked you. Yeah, but then ask more. All right. Because I, I would never. Why would I give you a test that would do that? What, no, no, no. What, what I'm saying is I had people who their test literally were just right line statements that had every one of these lines in there. Literally. That's not what you were supposed to do. All right. So what I'm going to do now, and, and the majority of you, I'll tell you, there were several people who got 100. All right. I'm going to show you right now what I was looking for. So my suggestion is if you, if you think to yourself, geez, I don't think I did very well, Start up a new project and type along with me. I want to make sure that as we get in here that, that people understand what it is you're supposed to be doing. All right? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab, I'm going to grab all of these comments because I'm going to put them in there as a prologue for the program. So there. So I'm going to copy that. Now I'm going to start up Visual Studio, okay? And I'm going to do a file, new project and I'm going to start a new console app project and I'm just going to call it payroll. I don't think I have one actually called payroll but we're going to find out. If I do it should come back and tell me in fact I'll throw it on the desktop there is nothing here oh there's a payroll Java so that's fine so I'll just throw this on the desktop so payroll all right so it's going to start to build itself. All right. So I'm going to come in here. Again, I'm going to just grab all of, whoops, not that. Again, I grabbed all of those comments that I put in here and just pasted them in. All right. So write a C-sharp program named payroll that calculates gross pay and prints out the employee the information whoops for two different employees all right declare the vol following variables for each employee so we're going to do all this first name last name hours worked and hourly rate now again i'm taking for granted that when i say that that people just plain realize well, let's see. First name, that ought to be a string. Last name, that ought to be a string. And I even said in here, each employee may work part of an hour, which means hours worked would be a double, or some of you made it a decimal or a float, which is fine. And you might make an amount per hour with cents in it. So in other words, both of these variables would be doubles. Does that make sense to everyone? All right. So, accept user input for all those fields and then calculate each employee's gross pay as hours worked times hourly rate. Also, keep a running total, and I'm just introducing that to you now, that's referred to as an accumulator, all right, called tote payroll, which holds the sum of both gross pays. At the end, print out first name, last name, hours worked, hourly, and hourly rate using the formats shown. Now, a couple of you said, hey, I did it, but I didn't do it as uh, two 
right lines. I only used one or whatever. And the bottom line was if you did it correctly, I didn't take off for that. All right? But I want to show, try to show you everything in here that I was expecting. All right? Now, this particular program, as far as I could tell at least, it had no constants. There was nothing that you were told to put in there as a constant. But we had a string for the first name, and I set that equal to the empty string. Please get used to, because in some programming languages, if you declare a variable, it's automatically initialized. This isn't one of them. So when you set up a variable like this, just get used to right away initializing it. Yes? Can you explain the difference between a double and a string? A string has no numerical value. So if I'd come in here and said this, that's not 312. That's the string 312. So a string has no arithmetic value whatsoever, whereas a double or an int or whatever, they do. So my question to you is taking a look at this. Is there anything in those variables that doesn't make sense? Because this is the time for you to ask. All right. I will have a double, which will be my gross pay. And again, what is that? That will be my hours worked times my hourly rate. And I'll have another double that I think we're supposed to call tote gross or tote gross pay. It doesn't really matter. But that's what I had in there for variables. Again, I'm asking any questions on any of this. Some of you, and it wasn't wrong, all right? What I'm telling you now wasn't wrong, but you said first name one, first name two, last name one, last name two, hours worked one, hours worked two, hourly rate one, hourly rate two, gross pay one, gross pay, you didn't have to do that. That's making double the variables you actually need. All right. So I said here, get info, I, how about input, for employee, bless you, employee number one. All right. So write please enter first name for employee one. All right, you, you know this already. We get that error, boom, we go there, and we want to that, that just means that we want to come up to the top. We don't really need again any of these, but I wanted to have my using in there. Static system dot console. Okay. Now that that's there, I don't get the error for the right. So uh, first name equals read line. All right. And I can just copy this because then we can enter the last name for the employee and the last name will be equal to read line. That will allow us to put in the first two values that we need to put in. Right? First name for employee one, last name for employee one. All right. Now remember, with, with the next two things that we're putting in here, with these two things, okay, we'll have to do a convert or something else. I just did it like this. Whoa. I just came in here and said, hours worked equals convert dot to double read line. All right. That will allow me to to put in the hours worked. 
Then I copied it down because I want to put in the hourly rate. So that's all of my inputs for the first employee. Okay. Now, just to show you this, I'm going to just come down here and put a read line in here. You don't have to do this until the end of the program. But I'm going to put a read line in there. And I'm going to run the program. And notice what it says here when I've done this. Please enter first name for employee one. Jeff, last name Scott, hours work 40, hourly rate 25. Now, that's all it does because I haven't done any more. But that's that information. So that allowed me to put in everything I was supposed to put in for the first employee. Does that make sense to everybody? All right. Yes. What does that convert that to double? That is, line? What does that do? Whenever you put something in in a read line, it gets read in as a string. <laughs> that's going to convert it from a string to a number. So now it has a numeric value. All right. So now we can come in here and say gross pay equals hours worked times hourly rate. That's all you were supposed to do. All right. Now, what I'm going to show you here, and even if you say I got this, I want to make sure everybody sees it. So I'm going to show you two different ways to print this. Everybody hear me? I'm going to show you two different ways. All right. So we could have come in here, and this is the way I did it. And uh, I, I'm going to just I'm going to do, do it a step at a time. So I'm going to say here, right line, put in a blank line, first name. All right, and we could have just said here, plus first name, plus then on another line, last name. So notice just putting that in, nothing else. We'll put the numeric stuff in in just a second. But just putting that in and running the program again. All right, Jeff, Scott, 25, 40, boom, I got that. And again, looking at what we're supposed to have, that's some of it already. It's not all of it, but that's some of it. All right? Because it said here, we were supposed to basically set it up as one right line statement. All right, so again, we're not done yet, but I'm going to add some more stuff to this now. Whoops. So the next thing would be our, oh, geez, hours worked. Plus. Now, to me, the easiest way to do this is to come in here and say hours worked dot to string, then in parentheses, F2, just like that. That says I want that to print, and I want it to be two decimal places. All right? To me, that's the easiest way to do it. All right, so I'm going to add to this, and I'm just going to copy this line because it's almost the same thing. All right, and we'll have hourly rate. Now, the rate was supposed to have a dollar sign in it, so we don't say F2. We just come in there and put a C in. All right. Well, what do we got left? We got the gross pay. So just putting that in, I'm not done. But just putting that in, let's see what we have. All right. 
that pretty much, I think, looks the way it's supposed to look. All right? Again, I'm not done yet. If you remember up here, I just figured out one of the gross pays, right? So what I really should have done up here is I should have said tote, tote gross equals, uh, how about plus equals? Jeez, oh, the machine's acting flaky again. Plus equals gross pay. All right. Didn't I call it tote gross? Tote gross. And I didn't, somehow I lost my semicolon. So if I want to write, if I want to write comments, get in, input for employee one. Boom. I could come down here and say, calculate gross pay for employee one. All right. Then I can come down here and I can say, add gross pay for employee one to total gross accumulator. Right? And then come down here and say, write out employee one information. All right? Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. So now the easiest thing as far as I'm concerned to do is to come through here and grab everything you just put in here. Everything. All the rights, all the right lines, all the calculations, everything. Copy it to the clipboard paste it right below where you just were, and change it from employee one to employee two. And I don't have to change anything. So let's see what we've got here. It might be too crunched. I mean, I, I don't know how I did with my line breaks, but that, that's not a big thing. Okay, there's the first one. Bless you. Okay, so I've got both of them for the two employees. So the only thing I have yet to do is to print out the actual... Um, Total gross. All right. Write out total gross for both employees. All right. I'm just going to grab this. And I'll put here total gross. Now, this is what I want you to see. Please, everybody, all right, look up on the screen here. So I can come through here and I can say plus tote gross dot two string C. Okay, and it should work just fine. This should be the, actually the entire program right here. Let's double check. Jeff, Scott, 40, 25. Okay, I, I still have to... Uh, Put in a line break right there. All right, that's everything. But where we've got please enter, first name for employee two, I want one more line break in there. I'm not going to run it again. So right here. I want a bat, one more backslash in. Now, if you didn't want to format it this way, if you didn't want to format it this way, we should be able to come in here and say this. Let's make sure. Curly brace, zero. Uh, I think we say colon C, but if I did it wrong, you're going to find out very quickly. Curly brace. And then if we do that, we should just be able to say tote gross. All right? That's the other way of doing it. Let's make sure that that works. Okay. And it does. 
that's the output that you were supposed to get. So you can either come in and do a two string on it, concatenate it, and say F2 or C or whatever, or you can do it like this. This is explained in the book. All right. I don't care which way you do it. Some people like this way because it normally in entails less typing. I like it this way because I can put the exact stuff in here that I want. You may or may not agree with that. A couple of you, too. You know, I took a point or two off if you look up on the screen because what you did was you did that, but it, it said you were supposed to do it currency, which means to two decimal places. That's currency format. And if you did it with no decimals, you lost a point or two. Now, you might say, well, that's not fair. Then it's not fair. Right? Come up and argue with the instructor, but he's not going to change his mind. I know him pretty well. It's just not going to happen. All right? So my question, I'll leave this up here for a second. Does anyone have any questions on anything that I just put up here? And if you're thinking, no, that's pretty much what I did, that's why I said prob probably about half the class got 100%. All right? I, I don't know if it's more or less. I don't really care. All right? Last chance. Anybody have any questions? All right. For the second one, you were supposed to write the C-sharp program for the T-shirt company. And again, unfortunately, what some people did was they just did write lines. All right, so you didn't do any calculations. If that happened to be you, you probably didn't do very well on this test. What I am going to do is if you scored below a 70, and you redo this where both of them work, I will adjust your grade. The maximum you can get is a 75, but it would at least bring you up to a C. So you can gain back half the points you lost. All right? All right, so that's the first one. So I'm going to stop the close. I'm going to close the solution here, and I'm going to new project again. Come in here. I think I might have one here called T-shirt already. I don't know. Yes, yeah, so I call it T-shirt. T-shirt? I guess not. All right. So, again, with that one, what we were supposed to do Write the program name that that prompts the user for their name, their address, their city, their state, their zip, and the quantity of t-shirts they order. Does it make sense to everyone in this room? Again, looking right here, all those fields are strings. Even the zip code is a string. Two reasons the zip code you typically make a string. All right, number one is it's possible you'd want to put the hyphen in there and then four digits, and number two, the only fields that you should declare as numeric fields are fields that could conceivably you, you were going to use in calculations. You're never going to use a zip code to calculation. All right. Then it said the quantity of t-shirts ordered at $14.99 each says use a constant for the t-shirt price. If you didn't make it a constant, you lost points. All right. Not only that, I did not take off for this, but in the future I will. I want your constants to be all uppercase. I did not take off this time if you didn't do that. I will next time. All right, because that's just the standard way of doing it. Then in an attractive format, this is Evan's problem that's on here, so I don't think that's an attractive format, but he does. All right. So it says, see below, display all the input data and the following. The subtotal, which will be how many shirts you had times the $14.99. The sales tax, which will be the subtotal times 8%. Again, it said use a constant. Same things apply. 
If you didn't make it a constant, you lost a point or two. All right? And from now on, I will expect your constants to be uppercase. Then the amount due, which is the subtotal plus the sales tax. Any questions on what's being asked for in that program? Because I'm going to write this fairly quickly. Again, I'm not trying to waste my time. I'm certainly not trying to waste your time. Okay, so come in here. The first thing that I did was to declare and initialize the program constants. So what did we have? I had const double t-shirt price equals 14.9999. And I had const double tax rate equals 0 0.08. Now, again, not trying to demean anybody in here, but I'm taking for granted those both make sense. All right? So after that, I wanted to come in here and declare and initialize the program variables. And what are they? They're right here. So name, street address, city, state, zip, those five are all strings. Okay, so there's those. That is five of the variables that we're dealing with. All right, and again, I get the green squigglies because even though I've declared them, even though I've initialized them, I am not yet using them in the program at all. So what else do we have? Quantity of t-shirts ordered. All right, what kind of variable should the number of t-shirts ordered be? Why? Yeah, because you can't order part of a shirt, not that I know of. All right. Just call it ord. That's bigger than it has to be, but that's fine. All right. So there are my variables. Now, am I going to have other variables? Yeah. All right. I'm going to have to have a double. That'll be my subtotal. And I'll set that equal to 0, 0.0. I'll have a double for my sales tax. And that'll be equal to 0, 0.0. And I'll have, that should be 0 here, sorry. And I will have a double, which will be my, let's just call it final total, grand total. Doesn't, doesn't matter. Now, I could take the time. I'm not going to and write comments for all these. But hopefully one of the things that I've shown you here, don't get me wrong, this, these are not fantastic variable names, but they're all good enough that I believe each and every one of you in here can look at it and know what it is 
all right, they, they represent, all right? So input customer information, right? Enter your name. Again, I need my using static system dot console up at the top. So write name. And I can use this for my first five variables. So after the name, we had city state zip. Just throw a read line down here. I'll need it later, but I'm going to put it in there right now. So again, if you look up on the screen, when I run this, enter your name, and it was supposed to be John Doe. Enter your address, 25 Rankin Lane, City, St. Louis, State, Missouri, zip code 63113. Boom. So that, that's most of the input. All right. The next line that we were supposed to put in here was how many shirts are you ordering? How many t-shirts did you want to order? Calculate the subtotal. T-shirt price. So taking it from the top, we came in, we declared and initialized the two constants. All right. T-shirt price, double, $14.99. Tax rate, double, 8%. All right. Then we came in and we declared one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine variables. First five being strings, name, address, city, state, zip. Then an integer for the number of T-shirts ordered a double for the subtotal, a double for the sales tax, a double for the final total. Then we came in and inputted the name. And again, not that it's a big thing. I wouldn't take off for this, but two or three of you did this, 
right here, you put a right line here, that just looks amateurish where you've got the input going up, going on the next line. Keep it on the same line. It just looks better. All right, so enter your name, enter your street address, enter your city, enter your state, enter your zip code. All right. Then we came in and said, all right, how many T-shirts do you want to order? Remember, we could have done this. I could have used another variable in here, but I just literally, just so you know, that's what's called a nested function or a nested method because the read line is inside of the convert.2 and 32. So it does the read line first, then it converts it. And I think you're all smart enough to realize that if, when, when, I, when I get asked that on the screen, all right, if I come in there and I put hello or I leave it blank, the program blows up, okay? Then we do our subtotal. That's how many shirts we bought, and each shirt cost $14.99. All right, so if it was five, like they said in here, it'll be five times $14.99, with $74.95 or whatever that is. Then the sales tax will be that $74.95 times 8%, so about six bucks. And then the final total will be the subtotal, the $74.99 plus the six bucks. All right. Then all that's left is to do the right line to write out everything, as far as I know. This I didn't care, so I, I mean, I'm just going to do them all, each is their own right line. And we had what? Uh, name. So if I run it right there, and I put in the same stuff we did before, John Doe, 25 Rankin Lane, St. Louis, Missouri, 63113, how many t-shirts, five, that's what we've got so far. I guess we were supposed to say receipt, and that's fine, we can put that in there, that's no big thing. All right, so I can put another right line in here. Probably. We'll fix that in a second. Okay, so there's the receipt. All right, we don't need that backslash in anymore. Name, address. Yeah, we want the city, state, and zip. Let's just make this a right. Okay. And we'll add a blank space there. And then there's the state. We'll make that a... What do we want here? We want it city, and then a comma in a space. All right, with a right, and then a right line for the zip. All right. So let's see if that fixed it. You were correct. Well, the address I got to fix, but city, I don't even think we had to put all that in there. I think we just, we didn't even have the headings. All right, so we'll fix all those. So we'll just put in the name. 
the address, the city, the state, and the zip. That's better, I guess. And then we were supposed to have what? Should have looked at it on here. So, how many T-shirts ordered at? Right. Okay, needs a little cleaning up, but you can see it does work. I, I guess really the cleaning up it needs is before the total. I need to put in a blank line. Not going to run it again. Hopefully that was enough that everybody understands. So again, taking it from the top, created our constants, created our variables, initialized our constants, initialized our variables, inputted the customer information, so the name, the address, the city, state, zip, which were all just regular read lines. How many t-shirts we wanted to order where we had to do a conversion all right then our subtotal which was the number of shirts we ordered times 14.99 the sales tax which was our subtotal times the tax rate which was eight percent and then we calculated the final total as being the subtotal plus the sales tax all right then we wrote everything out so right out the bill any questions on any of that? All right. It is 8.55. Let's come back at 
and I'm going to put everybody's test. And on the back, it's got what your score was. I didn't bring these home with me, so I just was working electronically over the weekend on these. Turn over to page two when you look at the bottom. Will show you what your grade was. What I tried to do as well was to come in and uh, show you where you what, what you did wrong. But I kind of mentioned it today. If you missed something, etc., where I took off, how I took off, or anything, etc. Okay. So again, if you received a grade of under 70% and you want to fix up what you did so that you so that it works and turn it back in, I will adjust your grade. I mean, if you got a 90, I don't want you to redo it so you get a 95. Like I said, if you, if you, scored, if you scored under, uh, John, I'll have yours graded by the end of the day. So.